Marvin Sapp is a famous gospel singer known for songs like Never Would Have Made It and You Saw the Best in Me. And for the most part, Marvin Sapp has kept a low profile. But here recently, he did an interview on Vlad TV. Now, Vlad and all of his associates, they interview different types of people from all walks of life, different genres, different industries. So when I saw Marvin Sapp on this platform, I was surprised because Vlad's track record, he is known for promoting controversy. So when I saw Marvin Sapp, I'm like, man, what are you getting yourself into? Now, I don't have a problem with pastors, Christian musicians going on secular platforms so long as they are preaching the gospel and making that known. For the most part, Marvin Sapp did. Check this out. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's what we're supposed to do. I was happy that Marvin Sapp identified himself as a minister of Jesus Christ. I was happy to hear Jesus Christ's name spoken in a way of honor on a secular platform because most of the time you only hear his name being degraded, dragged, or blasphemed. For the most part, Marvin Sapp answered all of the questions asked of him concisely, clearly, articulately. But everything changed when the interviewer asked him a question about homosexuality in the church. What what is your thoughts on homosexuality in Christianity? I I don't I don't know if it's against the church. Uh, I I just do know that there are some biblical things as it pertains to everybody has their own particular theology. And I, I'm gonna say that, you know, some people's theology has evolved as it pertains to um homosexuality being in the church. Uh and when you study the Bible, you would know to notice that that was a problem or was an issue in the church in days of old anyway, from a scriptural standpoint. Um, Why is it so hard to answer that question? What is the big deal? Just quote what the Bible says about that issue. The Bible is crystal clear. Why are we making it so difficult? I, I just do know that there are some biblical things as it pertains to Everybody has their own particular theology. Every church has a different opinion on the issue and every gay person it's different. And I'm gonna say that, you know, some people's theology has evolved. First of all, has your thinking evolved on this? E evolved and evolving, evolved and evolving. Everybody has their own particular theology. And I'm gonna say that. And that's part of the problem. Everybody has a different theology. There's only one theology on that issue. That issue is a sin, regardless of what a church says in their doctrinal statements. That is a clear-cut sin in the Bible, and we do much for the body of Christ if we can stand united on this issue, because people living in that lifestyle, some of them feel as if they can never get out of that, or that's how they are, or that's just how God made them. God did not make you that way. That is a choice, and when you properly teach that and properly educate people on what the Word of God says about that, people can come out of that and be delivered from that because the Bible says we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Deliverance is in the mind. It's in repenting. It's in understanding and knowing what God's word says about homosexuality. My position is, you know, I'm a heterosexual man. I, I, I believe in, you know, a man and a woman being together. Um, I'm not going to say nor will I ever put anybody in heaven or hell because of what they decide to do, um, because that's a God decision. And no one is asking you to put people in heaven or hell. It is not about putting people in heaven or hell. It's about clearly standing firm on God's word and speaking it with truth, with conviction. Well, thing we're talking about same sex uh, marriage, and uh, a lot of people uh, in the church are in conflict with this. How do you feel about same-sex marriage? Well, first of all, how I feel about any topic, I think it's going to be really minute. I think that's been the big problem is, is, is that I think that as Christians, as the church, we've come across like the, we've come across like the police, Yeah, you know, you know, what, what comes across like, you know, where, what, you know, our response is usually something along the lines of, uh, we're, um so you um well was 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 bad we don't we don't what <laughs> you know where what where, where the spirit of it it feels like the world police mm -hmm. so you know 
whatever my lens is, it's always going to be trying my best to see something through what I believe is going to be God's word and not God's word and, 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 and in essence of dogma. Why is it so hard to answer that question? Um, you know, because, because things can come from a very homophobic lens. And mm-hmm. sometimes it feels very homophobic when people try to make their, 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 their stance and their beliefs. And, you know, I, I mean, that's been some very painful, ugly things that have been, been said throughout the years that, that have not always been in the essence of a heart for Christ. Yeah, And so how I would always sum it up, whether, whether you're talking about any issue that, that people want to know, what does God's word say about it? This is the one that I always want to stand on in the book of Romans. It says, but there is none righteous, not one. Yes, sir. Okay, so you, uh, you don't have a problem with it. I believe that, that, that if the Bible calls anything a sin, it's listed in the same category as you would list pride, uh-huh. as you would list hate, mm-hmm. as you would list any other thing. And uh-huh. so that's why I said that we're all in the same pot together and we're all needing the same love and we're all needing the same grace. People like Marvin Sapp, T.D. Jakes, Joe Lowstein, all of these people, they want to take the scenic route to get to the destination when this destination is just a clear, straight drive. It's no scenic route, no, no loops, no alleyways. It's just a straight shot. Go straight to what the Bible says and leave it at that. And let those people grapple with the reality of what the scriptures says about that. So don't let anybody tell you that it's not loving if you stand flat-footed and speak the truth about this issue of homosexuality. What's not loving is to look someone in the eye when God says they are in jeopardy of an eternity in hell and merely wink and nod at their sin because you're afraid of being called names. Let this be a reminder, Christians, to stand on God's word. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't give anybody the impression that we're ashamed of what the word of God says about issues, especially when we go on secular platforms. We want them to know that we are firm. We believe what God's word says, and we're going to stand on it regardless of what the persecution may look like, what the affliction may feel like. We're going to stand on God's word no matter what, because people have respect for you when you have a standard. So have a standard. And if you want to know more about having standards, I suggest you watch this video right here. If you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Like this video. I'll be back next week with another one. This is Pastor Frederick. This is by the book. Peace.